Praise the Lord and welcome to another live service. Excuse me. Welcome to another live service of Hand of God, a service that we record live and we also record for playback weekly here in uh, Columbus, Ohio, where we're located, north side of Columbus, Ohio, 6230 Bush Boulevard, Suite 306. My name is Sean Henry Scott Sr. I go by the position of an apostle in the body of Jesus Christ. And as we have been doing for the past year since October, we've been on a Jesus 365 series by which we're preaching nothing but the gospel of Jesus Christ for 365 consecutive calendar days in our, on our Sabbaths, which is Saturday, which is when we honor the Lord in our ministry. I would like to, for you to uh, turn to the gospel according to Luke the gospel according to Luke and as always we read out of the King James Version of the Bible and um, if you're following along and before we do we always pray Father in the name of Jesus Christ we just thank and praise you for yet another opportunity to be in the land of the living we take it not for granted Father God that our fingers are working our hands is working arms chest eyes Father God our feet our ears, Father God, I don't take any part of the anatomy of the human body for granted that is working because I know it's only by your grace and your mercy that we're here right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I just pray, Father God, by the power and authority of the Holy Spirit that, you, Father God, you'll begin to move on someone right now in the name of Jesus who needs to hear a word from you. It's written in the book of Psalms, Father God, that you sent your word and you saved them from the destruction. Just pray, Father God, that there's somebody out there in despair don't know which way to go, don't know what to do, Father God, they would receive a word from you right now in the name of Jesus from somewhere, anywhere, Father God, that will help, uh, help them understand there is a way out. The enemy sometimes will make us think that there's no way out, that we're painted to a corner, that we have no other option. I just pray, Father God, you send your word to, to save them from their own destruction in the name of Jesus that created in their mind. I just ask and pray, Father God, the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. I just want to be clear. I want someone to understand what you're saying to their spirit, to the church, Father God. I just pray these things by the power and authority of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah and amen. Once again, we're in the gospel according to Luke. Starting a new chapter today, chapter 1. And we'll uh, get through this and move on. Amen. So, if you're there... It reads on this wise, for as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration excuse me, of those things which are most surely believed among us. Which are surely believed among us. I already like, that's the first, first scripture and I already feel the Spirit saying something. For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us. Even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. Excuse me. Verse 3, it seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of the things from the very first to write unto thee in order, most excellent, 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 excuse me, Theopolis, that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. It's a whole lot of meat from verse 1 to verse 4 already. I, I'm not feeling compelled to stop, but it's a whole lot of meat in the first four verses of Scripture. Verse 5, there was in the days of Herod the king of Judea a certain priest named Zacharias, a certain priest named Zacharias, of the course of Abia, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth, six. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments, the ordinances of the Lord, blameless. Seven, and they had no child. So the Bible says, I want to make it clear because there are some people out there right now who struggle with the fact that God won't bless them with a child. But it says right here that uh, they were blameless and they was walking walking in, in the commandments and the ordinances of the Lord, blameless, and they had no child. Because Elizabeth was barren, and they both were now well stricken in years, they was old, and it came to pass that while he executed 
the priest's office before God in order of his course. According to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. That was his job as a priest. Ten, the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord, standing on the right side of the altar of the incense. So he's doing his job in the, in the temple, and there appeared to him an angel on the right, right, and that's not a place where anybody should be at. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zechariah, for thy prayer is heard. And thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. I love the fact that God will not only tell us that our prayers have been heard, but he will give you instruction according how you are to answer your prayer. Your prayer has been answered and the instructions you're supposed to follow. There's never, I want to say this before I move on, there's never been a time in, in the history of the Bible, in the belief of, of humankind in the Bible in Jesus Christ, that where God will leave any room for guessing. When he gives you, and that's why sometimes people tell me, the Lord said this, the Lord said that, and there's, there's a mystery I'm like, that's not God. God is not a confusing thing. He will give you, when he gives you instructions, he's going to tell you everything you need to know to do, what you need to do to fulfill what he told you to fulfill. And 14, and thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor instructions. He shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. 16. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. Now I want you to hear this, because that's key. And he, excuse me, 16. And many of the children of who? Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. So right there, the angels let them know there are a lot of the children of Israel. Now the, the children of Israel were the chosen people of God. And right there, he's letting you know he's going to turn the children of Israel to God, which which is where they should already be. I tell people so often that there is the people that's in the pews that are already accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior that are often serving other gods. And, and, and because they're following after the traditions of men and they've been sifted, they don't even know it because they still go through the motions of, of going to church and paying tithes even speaking in tongues, shouting, they go through all that, but they don't understand they're serving another God. Not in, in not in doing that, but in their daily life and in their choices. They're literally serving little G's, not the big G. And, and, and they don't want to believe that because they're doing what the people who before them done, which were the traditions of men. And many of the children of Israel shall be turned to their to, to the Lord their God. 17, excuse me. And he shall go before him in spirit and power of the lives and turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready the people prepared for the Lord. 18. And Zechariah said unto the angels, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is well stricken in years. This is where we mess up sometimes. This angel not only told him who he was, he told him, told him what, he told him that his prayer would be answered, and he started to give him instructions as to what he's supposed to do. This is why silence is so important sometimes when preachers are talking, and I can say this for an example of myself, there's been times where God has used me to give instructions to people according to what God has told me to share with them, and before I can even really get all the instructions out or say anything, they already have an, a, a response based off of doubt. And fear. That lets me know that they don't believe that God is fulfilling what they've been praying for. In other words, you've been praying and believing God for something, and God comes in and, and sends an angel or a man or woman of God to give you instructions according to how you are to, to have your prayer not only answered but be fulfilled, and you come with doubt. And Zechariah 18, and Zechariah said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I'm an old man. And my wife is well stricken in years. Now God already knows you're old. God already knows your wife is well stricken in years. So you don't need to tell God things he already knows. Because all that does is prove you have doubt in the God that you're serving. 19, and the angel answered and said unto him, I am Gabriel. 
I stand in the presence of God, and I am sent to speak unto thee, and to show thee these glad tidings. And behold, now look, verse 20 is about to happen because he, all, all because of 18, verse 20 is about to happen. If, he, if, if only he would have just been quiet and listened to what the, the Gabriel was saying, verse, there would be no need for verse 20. And behold, thou shalt be dumb and not able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed, because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. And a lot of people are like, well, I didn't really say anything. You showed doubt. That's a little leaven leavens the whole lump. Now, they, it, it, the scripture has already showed us by way of evidence that she was barren. They walked blameless before God and, and followed the ordinances. They did everything as believers they're supposed to do. Because so often we think that we're not doing something, and that's why God has not given us what we're supposed to have. We always think that, you know, well, if I do this and I do this, it ain't even according to your righteousness. It ain't even according to, just obey God and do what God has told you to do. And when your season and your time come, God is going to fulfill your prayers and do what he wants to do to reveal his glory. But, and when that day coming, and this, that's why I love the fact that this scripture is right on time of where we are right now in time. Because I've been calling this year 2014 manifestation. God is manif manifesting things, manifesting things. But, and when that day comes, do not use doubt. Do not allow verse 18, as Zechariah said unto the angel, whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man. God knows you're old, God knows you broke, God knows you ain't got no credit, God knows everything about you. So the last thing you want to do is when God, well, Lord, I ain't got this, and I ain't, he knows that. Because in that case, verse 20, my and behold, thou shalt be dumb and not able to speak until the day of these things shall be performed, because thou believest not my words. Makes it real clear. These, he says, because you don't believe is why this has to happen. Excuse me for a second, I will not Been on that all year. Believe, 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 believe. And, and, and according to people read 18, it's like, well, he didn't really say anything to prove that he didn't believe. Let me understand something when you're dealing with God. He knows everything. God knows everything there is to know about you. So that was a lack of faith and lack of belief and, and doubt. And Zacharias, back to 18, and Zacharias said unto the angel, Where about shall I know this? For I am an old man and wife was stricken years. Really, in reading that, that he, he really didn't display to us any form of doubt or belief. But because Gabriel is who he is, God is who he is, he did. In verse 3, And behold, thou shalt be dumb and not able to speak until the day these things shall be performed, because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their seasons. He said, and that's, that's what he said, because you believe it's not. I can say by testimony that God gave me something about Wednesday, today, Saturday. God gave me something on Wednesday that, I was about to say I was too old to receive it. And then God reminded me before I can get the words out of my mouth is, is that who, who, who are you and who am I? Our faith, is, our faith excuse me, is going to be tested for time and time again. And I had to rebuke a guy last Saturday according to the to, 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 to times we live in. He was, he's, he's younger than me. He was saying, well, I didn't get that over to my son because I'm too old. Dude, you ain't even really 40, good 40 yet. And the Bible says, according to the scripture, that according to the promise, we can get 120 years if we do follow and do what we're supposed to do according to the word. So how is 40 too old to fulfill certain things? We can't allow the world's mindset, the world's timeline, the world's guidelines dictate our God. That, that is showing a lack of belief. I'm too old for this. I'm too old for that. You know, lost your mind. What did Caleb say when he was 80? He was like a 20-year-old or 40. I gotta read that scripture again. But you gotta, you gotta let God be God. 21. And the people waited for Zacharias and marveled that he tarried so long in the temple. What is taking him so long? 22. And when he came out, he could not speak unto them, and they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple, for they beckoned unto him and remained and remained speechless. 23. And it came to pass that as soon as the days of his administration were accomplished. He departed to his own house. And after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived and hid herself five months, saying, 
Thus hath the Lord dealt with me in the days wherein he looked upon me to take away my reproach among men. So in the Bible days, it was a reproach because people, if you was barren, you was looked at like, oh, something wrong with her. She can't have no babies. So she says, to take away my reproach among men. So from the beginning of the time of men, we always been thinking about what people think about us. 26, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Zab, Naz, Nazareth, excuse me, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph and the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when, when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. Wow, man, what kind of greeting is that? And the angel said unto her, Fear not. Now, this is the second time Gabriel had to tell, he, he always, hey, fear not. Don't trip. You know what I'm saying? Because this is something that we're not used to. An angel talking to a person, this is something that's, that's he's not talking like a regular person. That's why it's so important that when God sends somebody to us, we need to know God by the words of his messengers. We need to, we need to know how, because people get fearful from both. They get fearful from the enemy, and they get fearful from the angels or, the, or people who are sent by God because of the way they're speaking. And the angel said to her, fear not, for thou hast found favor with God. That's something I've learned to pray, to pray to have favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. So once again, a person is getting instructions on what to name their child. Not only are you going to have a child, this is what you're going to name him. He shall be great, he shall be called the son of the, most, son of the highest, and the Lord shall give him unto him the throne of his father David. More instructions. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and his kingdom there shall be no end. Then, then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? Now up here where he said, And the angel said unto Mary, Fear not, for thou hast found favor with God. Back 34, Then Mary said unto the angel, how, how shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore, also, that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. 36. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. That's an awesome verse of scripture right there. Verse says, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. Old women can get pregnant, and you can get pregnant without a man touching you. 38, and Mary said, behold, thy handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. She submitting, and the angel departed from her. She submitting to the, to the calling that's put on her life. She submitting, he said, and Mary said, behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. In other words, I accept the word. I receive the word that you're giving to me. And Mary arose in those days and went, to, look, she could not wait. I want to say this real quick. God could have chose anybody he wanted to, to, to be, to be uh, the mother of John the Baptist. He could have chose anybody. But I feel in my spirit that God chose Elizabeth for the simple fact that once she was old and well stricken in years, it was it was pro proven that they they walk and they follow the ordinances of God. So he's not gonna John's not gonna come from a crazy family. They did everything they were supposed to do according to the word. So, but God could have chose anybody. But not only did He choose Elizabeth, He chose somebody who Mary knew. Cause it's something about us when we know somebody who's going through something that we're going through. We we're comforted. We're strengthened in the fact that okay, they going through it. I'm going through it. That we can we can strengthen each other. So, and Mary couldn't wait to go see her. 39, and Mary rose those days and went to the hill country with haste. So she hurrying up. And this angel just said she was six months pregnant. And we know she old. She been barren. So we're going to go, I'm gonna, I want to see this. That's going to be confirmation to me. In the city of Judea. And enter into the house of Zacharias and, 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 
and salutated Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Now she's filled with the Holy Ghost. The angel already said the baby going to come out the womb filled with the Holy Ghost. Now Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost on the salutation of Mary coming. And she spake out of the vow, and she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Now that she's filled with the Holy Spirit, she can boldly speak and testify to things that she don't even know. Because the scripture makes it clear that the Holy Spirit will, will, will give us everything and bring all things to our remembrance. Whatsoever God has spoken to us. So the angel has already spoken to her concerning her miracle, and she, she feels it growing. She's six months pregnant. Now, because she's filled with the Holy Spirit, she's speaking boldly. And she spake out with a loud voice, saying, Blessed art thou among women. That's why you know when people got the Holy Ghost, because now they're speaking about things that they could not know, but the Spirit of the living God tell them. And blessed, and spake out with a loud voice, said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed are the fruit of thy womb. And because Mary is not showing. Mary is not six months. She don't know Mary is pregnant. All she knows is she just got filled with the Holy Ghost and she's speaking. And her words is saying something that she shouldn't even know. And whence is to me that manner of the Lord should come to me. For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is she that believeth. Here it is. And blessed is she that believed it, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. He's going to perform what he said. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. She knows. She's about to be called blessed for all generations. For he that is mighty have done to me great things, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in, in, in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree. He has filled the hungry with the good, type, good things, excuse me, and the rich, he has sent away, empty away, excuse me. He hath hoping his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. 55. As he has spake to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed forever. And Mary abode with her about three months and returned to her own house. So Mary stayed with her three months. Now, when she first got there, she uh, Elizabeth was six months pregnant. So this now, three more months, that makes her nine months pregnant. Now, Elizabeth's full time came, and she should be delivered as she brought forth a son. Now, Mary stayed until she was ready to give birth, and then she left. I don't know, I probably would have stayed to want to see her, her give birth. But uh, the Bible, it was time for her to go. Excuse me, now, Elizabeth full, full time came, and she would be delivered and would brought forth a son. And her neighbors, her cousins heard how the Lord has showed great mercy upon her, and they rejoiced with her. Yeah, because all these same people that looked upon her and said, she, look, she, she, yeah, she go to church, she pay her tithes, she, she with her husband, she don't cheat, they don't mess around, they do everything they're supposed to do, we ain't never heard of domestic violence, it's just, they do everything they're supposed to do, but why ain't she pregnant? Why haven't God blessed her? Now, in her old age, God is getting the glory because this is a time, this is time past. She ain't supposed to be able to have kids. Now God's going to give her, he's going to answer her prayer and give her what she's been believing God for. Now it says right here, and her neighbors and her cousins heard now how the Lord has shown great mercy upon her, and they rejoiced with her. And it came to pass that on the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child, and they called him Zacharias, after the name of the father. Now in the Bible days, you was named after your father. It was, it, it was a no-brainer. There's nothing that's wrong with this generation. They trying to think of some cool things. They looking in books. They, the people flipping coins trying to figure out what to name their children. You name the child after the father. And don't give me that he ain't there, he ain't never been there, he ain't... Well, don't give me all that nonsense. You never should have laid down with the man if you did not want to do this. This is how you know people are following after the scripture and after God. Unless that boy's daddy's name is, is Buckwheat or something just totally crazy, 
you follow after the manner of the scripture. Now, here's, here's your exception right here. And his mother answered and said, not so, but he shall be called John. Why? Because the angel Gabriel told her to call him John. So if an angel comes before you and tells you to call your child something else, that's what you do. Otherwise, the child is named after the father. Why? Because the mother is going to get remarried, remarried, remarried. That, that, then there's no lineage. There's no connection between that bloodline for that child to carry on one way or the other the things of the father. See, when you don't teach kids the Bible and how they're supposed to do and what they're supposed to do, they're just aimlessly out there just making up their own form of, form of godliness. There's a reason why a child is named after the father. One way or the other, even if that father was no good, good for nothing, that child could be raised up by the spirit of the living God and, 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 that, and that curse could be canceled and he carry carry on a righteous branch from then on so that family can be saved through the bloodline of that family. And the traditions of men would not follow over into that son but that son will go on and preach the gospel. And when they look back on that, that family, they was like, wait, hey, 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 hold on. Well, his dad was so-and-so, but this person is preaching the gospel. So look, that's what we'll be known by now. We'll be known by a family who preached the gospel. <laughs> Getting back on track. And his mother answered and said, not so, for he shall be called John. And they shall, and they said unto her, there is none of thy kindred that is called by this name. 62, and they made signs to his father. Remember, his father can't speak. And they made signs to his father how he would have him called. So she said not so, but they're not going to necessarily listen to her. So they're looking at the daddy who can't speak. And they're making signs to him because he can't speak. And he asked for a writing table and wrote saying his name is John. So they got to listen to him. And they marveled all. They're like, wow, man. They don't mind her family name John. Why are they calling this the baby John? And because he was obedient, now remember, his lack of faith and belief is what got him dumb and quiet, got him silenced. But because he was obedient, it took him nine months. But because he was obedient, 64, and his mouth was open immediately, and his tongue loosed, and he spake and praised God. So the first thing he did with his mouth, once his mouth got loose, is he praised God. And fear came upon all that dwelt around them, and all them saying, all both these saying were noise abroad throughout all Judea and the hill country of Judea. You gotta understand something. These are the Bible days. Ain't no Facebook, ain't no phone, smartphones, ain't no smart TVs, ain't no, ain't no CNN, ain't no TMZ. Ain't there ain't too much really going on. You know, a couple cows may be getting tipped every once in a while, some sheep making some noise, but for the most part, there ain't too much going on. That's why when you put yourself in the context of the Bible and understand what God was speaking and things was going on. There wasn't too many distractions. So any any type of thing that, that went on that was outside of the norm was huge news. And that's what it says. And fear came on all that dwelt around about them, and all these sayings were noise abroad throughout all the hill country of Judea. Like, man, did you hear what happened? They're going, they're like, man, wow. And all that heard them laid them upon their hearts, saying, What manner of mouth, excuse me, what manner of child shall this be? And the in the hand of the and the hand of the Lord was with him. Excuse me again, I got both notes. Because you gotta understand something. They're not just seeing what's going on now. They've been following this, they've been following this birth. These people have been following this birth since day one, since he went in to, to minister in the temple. They've been following this, 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 this whole situation from day one because they're looking to see what's gonna happen. It's like, hold on. Old woman, old woman pregnant. Someone probably thinking she ain't gonna she ain't gonna carry that baby turn. She too old. She can't carry that baby. Something gonna happen, she's gonna have miscarriage, baby gonna come out, ain't gonna be right. You know how people think? That's what they're thinking. So they've been following this situation from day one. Now, they don't know too much about Mary except for Mary came to visit. And when Mary came to visit and Mary left, she was only three months pregnant. So they don't really have a full understanding of what's going on with Mary yet. So they're tripping off of the fact that Elizabeth and Zacharias is about to have a baby with their old self and what's going on because he came out of the temple. He was dumb. So they're going, they're like, man, do you hear? So the gossip is going crazy. People are like tripping like, oh, my God. You couldn't understand the setting. See, sometimes we think of the Bible, we think about the way it is now. We got so many things to distract us, so many things going on that people get distracted from what God is saying and what God is doing. That ain't necessarily the case 
with, with, with the Bible days because they didn't have all these distractions, all these things that pulled them away from the things that God was doing. So any kind of thing out of the norm was blown up, blown up huge. Like, oh, man, did you hear about um, Zacharias? And, 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 and first he came out of the, uh, the temple and he couldn't speak. He was speaking when he went in. He came out he couldn't speak. Now he's walking around with a writing tablet. And then, and then, you know, after a little couple, man, you hear about his wife being pregnant? Ain't they like old? They ancient. So all these things are going on. Excuse me, 66. And they and all they that heard heard them laid upon their hearts, saying, What manner of child shall this be? Now they then they said, Oh man, this kid must gonna be something special. All this stuff's going on. And the hand of the Lord was with him. 67. And his father Zacharias was filled. Third person to be filled through this situation. First, it was written. I said by Gabriel that the baby would be filled upon his birth. Elizabeth got filled on the citation of Mary, and now Zacharias is getting filled. So the whole family is filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, That's another sign that you know a person is filled with the Holy Ghost. They have the power to prophesy, to speak those things that are not as though they are so. The power to speak those things that they have no idea what they are, but they're speaking from God, the hand of God. And it's written in Second Chronicles that if you, you if you believe twenty twenty, that if you believe God, you will be established. You believe His prophets, He will He will prosper you. Getting back on track, sixty seven. His father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, "Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for He hath visited and redeemed His people." That wasn't his job in the priestly office. His job, according to the Bible, was to do what? What was his job? His job was just to, to light the candles. That's what his job executes as. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God and ordered his course, according to the custom priest's office, his lot was to burn, excuse me, burn incense. So that was his office. In the, now, because he got the whole, now, he, now that he's filled the Holy Ghost, now that he's filled with the Holy Ghost, this is what he's doing. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. So when a person is filled with the Holy Ghost, they come with Holy Ghost boldness. Yeah, I used to be a person who burnt incense. Now, I'm some, part, some a person who's proclaiming the, the gospel, the good news. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. And have raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. 71. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all those that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. 73. The oath which was the oath which he swore to our father Abraham. This, these are things that that, that Zacharias is speaking now. He got the Holy Ghost now. He coming. 74, that he will grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness, righteousness before him all the days of our life. 76, and that child shall be called the prophet of the highest for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins. Once again, this is Zachariah speaking because he followed the Holy Ghost. Through, their through the tender mercies of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that are sitting in darkness and in shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit and was in the desert hills to the day of his showing unto Israel. Amen. So we just finished the whole chapter of the gospel according to Luke. And if you didn't get anything else out of there, I hear the Holy Spirit speaking louder than anything else. You see how the Holy Ghost has supernaturally supercharged your life once they was filled? You hear people sometimes always debate the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, I remember how I was prior to being filled with the Holy Spirit. Passive, quiet, no boldness, no conviction. Speaking what I'm, I think I know, but not necessarily what I do know, because I have to always go back to make sure. But when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you can boldly proclaim things that you have no earthly idea what you're saying, because it's not you that's speaking, it's the Holy Ghost. 
speaking those things that need to be heard, that people can be saved, healed, and delivered. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ you got exactly what you needed to fulfill your calling. If you need be, read back over that chapter and, and, and take notes and get out of what you need so you can receive what God has for you in this day and this time. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard. I just pray in the name of Jesus Christ that somebody right now be filled with the Holy Spirit because it is yet available for those that believe in the name of Jesus Christ. That not only they be filled with the Holy Spirit, Father God, they let the Holy Spirit lead their life, to guide their life, direct their life, so they can speak boldly in this generation of things that need to be spoken so that people can be saved. Like it says in the scripture, so that salvation might come, so that knowledge of who to give knowledge and salvation unto the people, Father God, in the name of Jesus, for the, for the, by the remission of their sins. I pray, Father God, for Holy Ghost boldness, Holy Ghost truth, that they be led in the name of Jesus, Father God. Not speaking from the wisdom of men, but from the wisdom of God. I thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that you're going to do exactly what you said you're going to do. Because you already done it. You already fulfilled everything except for coming back, Father God, in the name of Jesus. I pray we come to the full understanding of who you are and what you desire for us to do. So that we can give you glory all the days of our lives. We pray this prayer in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah and amen. My name is Sean Henry Scott Sr. I go by the position of an apostle in the body of Jesus Christ. If you ever need us, call upon us at 614-723-9770. If for some reason you can't get a hold of us, because it's our office number and we specialize in outreach, you can uh, email us. The email is checked for sure every single day at www.teamjesususa.com. That's www.teamjesususa.com. Or 614-847-2057. We'll do our very best. But the, the email is the best way to get a hold of us. And, and, and at the contact in our, in our place. And also there's a place where you can donate. So if you feel led, the Spirit comes upon you to give some money, get some money. Because we need money to make the ministry runs. We walk in the faith and the favor of God. But hey, money won't hurt neither. Well, I thank you for joining us. And I pray you was blessed. And if, like I said, if you need us, call upon us. May heaven's face smile upon you. May God bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.